Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. At one time in our lives, we're going to experience this, and we have to deal with it. And many of us process it in many different ways. And I'm talking about grief. It's a word that sometimes you get uncomfortable hearing, and we all have different ways of, of moving through it. Sometimes it's a little easier than others, sometimes not. And for that, there is somebody that is there certainly to help you out. She's the creator and director of the Integrative Wellbeing Institute. She's Georgina Grace, and she's on the program with us. Georgina, welcome. How are you today? I'm just fine. Thanks so much for having me today, Steve. What you offer is so important and so unique at the same time. What would you call yourself? Are you a grief counselor? Are you a grief grief therapist? What? How would If somebody ran into you at the supermarket, what would you tell them? Well, the first thing I'd tell them is I am a grief therapist. And we explore grief, though, through the wisdom of the body. So ideally, in a future time, we will all recognize the word somatic. So I'm actually a somatic grief therapist, which means body grief therapist. Hmm. But I'd never say any that to somebody in the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they'd already walk away by now. <laughs> oh, they would. Indeed. They might even walk away with the word grief or therapist. <laughs> right. Exactly. But it's, again, we've all been through it, many of us, or will go through it. Let's define grief and where it comes from. And And first off, the first thing, of course, we think of is the passing of a loved one. But grief can come in the in the form of the end of a relationship as well, right? Exactly. I talk about the six deadly deeds. And because often we don't recognize that we are grieving. So when we have had the breakup of a relationship, divorce, or we've had the death of a person, a pet, mm. or and that's very important for people to realize, um, if we've had a diagnosis, in our culture, very often what we do, Steve, is we get this diagnosis and then we go into the mode of, okay, now what are we going to do? Instead of stopping and saying, oh, what's happened to my body? How am I really feeling about mm. this? And then there is the grief from trauma, the bullying, the, uh, all kinds of wow. things. So we must begin to recognize grief. We were all drowning in grief during the pandemic because being isolated from one another when we're naturally people of connection, that was a grief, very long grief uh, phase for all of us. Wow. I didn't think of it in those terms. And you do bring it to light where grief takes many different shapes and forms. Um, Again, the first thing we think of is the passing. And thank you for bringing a pet as well. Um, it does take over our bodies, doesn't it? It does indeed. We can't think our way through grief. I define grief as the internal state of deep, dark, anguished feelings, thoughts, and beliefs that live in the body. So that's a very complex experience and really loss is a natural part of life and grief is a universal consequence of loss mm. so when we realize oh i'm in grief i'm grieving there's nothing wrong with me we can really shift how we're experiencing ourselves and relating mm. to one another interesting that you bring that up georgina that it's loss and I'm, I'm trying to apply every situation that we're talking about, but even when it's a diagnosis, you've lost something. You've yeah. lost the life that you had, depending on what that diagnosis is. Obviously, if it's the passing of, of a pet or a person, that's the loss there. Relationship, the loss of that. So yeah, universal in terms of that. How do we move, You know, just in the starting stages of, of us digging into this, how do we move through grief. Are there different stages? Well, and we really need to stop and realize that there are different states of grief. 
there's the raw grief where we're crying 24 seven or we're numb in shock walking around out of our bodies. Mm. And then we move into that place in grief that I call fragile grief. And fragile grief is where we're beginning to look like ourselves again, but inside we're barely holding ourselves together. And then the third state of grief that I experienced is gentle grief. Grief never goes away, but it becomes different. So in gentle grief, we've got this underground stream of how that loss impacted us in life. And then what happens is things will bring that grief up to the surface. It may just bubble up as gentle grief, or it may shoot up like an old faithful, a geyser. It's there, it's intense, but it's over quickly. So that's how I talk about grief and educate people to notice grief. I'm learning a lot today, as all the rest of us are, that, and I don't even want to say this, but you said it, grief never goes away. That's right. It becomes different. So you see that impact is there. And how many people have said when they've had the cancer diagnosis and they've moved through that process, I wouldn't wish this on anyone, but I'm a different person. I learned so much about myself from this. So I talk about the three facets of grief, Steve, and those are navigating the ocean of emotion. Mm. For some people, it's that crying, sadness, guilt. For others, it is numbness. So as you said at the beginning of the program, everyone grieves differently. Another facet of grief that I've seen over the decades is grief brings up the deepest, darkest parts of ourselves, longing to be heard and healed. And so when we've had a complicated relationship with a parent, for instance, going back to being that little child and looking at the dynamics of that is part of the grief process. For those people who have lost a child, they might be blaming themselves unreasonably for something they did or didn't do. And so that brings up something for us to look at, to listen to. And then finally, the third facet is answering the question, who am I now? Hmm. You, you answered one of my questions before you even got to it, and that's guilt. Mm -hmm. Guilt that's... is a big one. If I could invent a magic wand that could zap guilt, I would. It's just the biggest thing. And as Brene Brown taught us, guilt is feeling like you've done something bad. And so as a therapist, I sit with people and I ask them to really think about their belief about this. Is it really true? Yesterday, Steve, I had the privilege of interviewing a prominent suicidologist, Dr. Stacy Friedenthal. And so we talked about thoughts and beliefs. And guilt, you see, is that belief I've done something bad. Well, on the program, we came to this conclusion. Don't believe everything you think. The mind lies. The body tells the truth. Mm. there you have it and that comes up in so many different forms and in, in terms of 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 guilt we'll center for a moment on that passing of somebody i wish i was there for them when they passed or i wish i spent more time with them or loss of a relationship you know i should have done this instead of that how do you get past the guilt part since it's so big Guilt is a call for care. It's a call to pause. And it's a call to really notice if the this or the that was something you did out of love or meanness. And I know that that sounds simple, 
but and very often as people we're unconscious we think oh i don't have time to go and see my grandmother and then the next thing that happens is you get the call that your grandmother has passed and that's why i say it's a call it's a call to say all right i did that what do i did i do it because i was being mean or because i was being unconscious or did i make that choice because it was tough love and then we get to choose how we're going to move forward with that awareness. I'm meeting with a group of people tonight, Steve, and we're going to explore micro decisions. What is it that we are doing moment by moment, first based on a thought or a belief, and then by the action and what's informing that action. Is it love? Is it fear? Is it revenge? We're complex beings. And so this whole life journey is an opportunity to learn and grow. But most of all, to come into greater and greater self-awareness and new connections with the people and the things in front of us. And maybe even look at the the grief you're experiencing. Maybe it's the passing of someone. We didn't want it to happen. No. We're carrying that burden. But look for the lesson. What did I <laughs> learn from them, from the relationship? My point here is trying to turn it into more of a positive. That's right. Because that can then uh, allow you to honor them moving forward in your life. What was the gift of that person? Very often when I do circles with people is for celebrating the life of someone, I'll have each person come up with a candle that's lit and say and tell what they remember about that person and then what they're going to carry forward to honor that person. Love that. Okay, we're gonna now let's turn the car a little bit. Anger, okay. Anger. Anger can be part of grief. Angry that this is your life now. Yes. Angry that a relationship ended and maybe the other person did something that wasn't so so good. And now you're angry. How mm -hmm. do you get past the, the anger? First of all, it's really important to feel where the anger is in your body. Mm. Because it will it can inform you then as a guide. And when we are angry, it's very important to realize that anger can move us forward. I'm so angry about this, I'll never da-da-da-da-da. I'm so angry about this, I'm going to do this. Hear the movement that can happen as people move forward. Underneath anger is fear. What is it you're afraid of? of that will happen again or what is it about what you did or they did that is causing this anger so what are you noticing as i'm responding with this what you're saying i'm co i'm collecting from you is the mm -hmm. listen to your body number one yes mm -hmm. and and what what are you getting from it again there's there's a Loosely said here, a lesson in it. What are you yes. worried? What are you worried about? Somebody right. close to you passed. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose another family member. Yes, so that's fear. Uh, could be abandonment, and abandonment mm -hmm. takes the shape in many different forms. Even the loss of a relationship. Now you're on your own. You know, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Um, that's that's what I'm getting. You know, primarily. Yes. From you. and I really appreciate your your deep listening because. Under We all come in with life themes to heal, and abandonment is one of those themes. So when we've been abandoned yet again, and we're angry about that, I, as a therapist, will gently say to the person in front of me, how are you abandoning yourself? Mm. What about your thoughts and behavior are creating 
anger because you see everything is a two-way street. If we look at relationships as a horizontal figure eight, you're in one loop right now and I'm in the other. And we're connecting at that point in the middle and we're listening and we're taking turns. Well, what's out there in front of us in our world, I have experienced as a reflection of what's happening in me. And so it's, an, it's a call for care. It's a call for deep listening. It's a call for learning, as you said several times in this program. And you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> and with the figure eight, I have the, you know, the visual of the, the yin and the yang. Yes, absolutely. You know, kind of that mm -hmm. work in that way. Mm -hmm. We want to get to in, in a moment, how you can center yourself. If yes. you're going, if you're experiencing some of the different emotions connected to grief before we get there though, if you've lost somebody, let's say a spouse, let's say it was sudden. Everybody is different. What's a reasonable expectation to feel that you are past a certain point where you're, you're, you kind of moving your life forward? Uh, and kind of a shocker for me, Georgina, that we never get rid of grief. Never, mm -hmm. never knew that. And that's mm -hmm. it. Well, once you're mindful of that, it kind of resets mm -hmm. you that uh, it this does. is, is going to be with you for a while. It yeah. is. And it's not something to get rid of, it's simply an awareness that grief never goes away. It becomes background though, right. instead of foreground. It's in the rear so, view mirror. You got it. And that's a, as long as you don't keep looking in the rear view mirror, right. then you're okay. Well, you know what? How's this? Is this reasonable? Picture you're driving and you pass a place where you and that person who left you in whatever shape and form. Right. Uh, and, and of course you grieve them. So you got triggered. You, you look in the rear view and you see them or you, you, you feel them for that moment, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then you keep, but then you keep driving. That's right. That's right. And give gratitude for how they were in your life, what they brought to it, how you were richer because they were part of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If somebody lost a spouse to go through that process, is there kind of a a way to look at that? Let's say it was a sudden loss and now you're year one, year two. Um, everybody's different. Everybody grieves differently, but you know, guidelines there. Grieve every day. Take time to create a place where you can go and grieve for five to 30 minutes every day. Because what this does is, is this gives you the freedom to grieve. Now, for some people, they've said to me, Georgina, I'm so numb, I, I can't feel anything. I said, that's fine. What is it like for you to look at their picture? Oh, I can't do that. Okay. What is it like for you to listen to a song that was very important for the two of you? And so many people will say, oh, that does it for me. That allows me to go into that state of longing, that state of deep sadness, and it may be the anger, the guilt, all those things. But what it does is it gives a person the privacy because grief is a very unique personal experience to come to that place, to not try and get rid of their grief, but to meet it, to listen to their grief and allow it to inform them. What I teach people to do is to recognize your grief, to relate to it. And so it can be released or at least it can soften. It sounds like it's important on a regular basis, daily basis, to grieve, to let it out. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. almost, you know, I call it the emotional bucket. Your bucket keeps getting filled. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe on a daily basis, if you're going through grief in a very short period of time, the bucket's at the top, just about to overflow. You got to empty that bucket. Maybe on a, it's almost like having a leak in the bathroom. You have to empty it on a regular <laughs> basis. Um, 
Does that sound yeah. like it's an, something important yeah. to do? It really is. Mm. When my mother died in July of 1997, my dad had her picture on the dresser. And every morning, he had been her caregiver for nine months because she died of a brain tumor. And we were all there, of course, to support him. But they'd been married 51 years, Steve. And so every morning, he would tell my mother what he was going to do for the day. And my dad was one of those amazing men that could light up a room and he was very emotional. And so at the end of the day, he would come back and he would tell her what he'd done and he would cry and then he would sleep peacefully and it would start again. Well, I saw my dad for his birthday on October the 6th and he said, Georgina, I'll be done grieving on December the 1st. Well, I quickly did the math. My goodness, that's four and a half months I, or, or, or less. I mean, we've got August, September, October, November. And okay, here we are. And so he did that. My dad set a timeline for himself, gave himself permission to grieve, and he grieved in a healthy way. Hmm, it was interesting. Amazing. Yes. Not everybody wants to do that. He was a captain on MacArthur's staff, so that tells you a lot about my dad. <laughs> yeah, but that that's interesting, depending on who you are, how you're mm -hmm. wired, to to set a date. And mm -hmm. you know, to to feel that I've done I've done my grieving in the total amount of time from your mom's passing mm -hmm. to that that date. How much time was that? It was it was four and a half months. So past the four and a half months, how was he and what did he do? Oh, he was ecstatic. We saw him at the airport on December the 5th, and he was getting ready to fly back east to his 60th class reunion. And he was so excited. And he shared stories about the people that would be there and what he was looking forward to in the new year. He was going to buy a new car, join this golf course, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. It was astounding, Steve, to get the call the next night at 10 o'clock at night from my Aunt Mary that said, Your dad's dead. He sat down on the couch after dinner with his friends and had a heart attack and died. Wow. So you see, we never know. And so what my dad did is he set for himself the intention of living fully. And that's the gift he brought to me. So that's what I intend to do with my life. I love that idea. I don't know why I do, but, you know, maybe I'm similar to your dad where, you know, set a date. That's the goal. That's the plan. Uh, it's not like you're forgetting somebody. You're no. still remembering them, but you're you're moving on. You're moving mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not to mm -hmm. say things might not pop up, but they're going to pop up in a different way because in your mindset, you've set that. Exactly. And when we went back to the house to, of course, pack up all the things, mother's picture was still on dad's dresser. Oh, of course. <laughs> as Absolutely. It, as it should be. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, my mom passed four years ago, just past the anniversary of, of that. Um, she, it was sudden, but she was almost 90. She just shy a couple of, couple of months of her 90th. Um, there was grieving, but I have to tell you, I feel closer now to her than I did when she was alive. And not that there was a, the relationship was bad at all. And she was mm -hmm. maybe 12 minutes away from me. And I would see her, you know, fairly regularly take her to the store, you know, when she stopped driving, but she's here, she's always around. And, mm -hmm. and I, I ask for signs, you know, I don't want to get spiritual here or anything, but uh, I ask for signs and I get them. I only ask when I really need them, but I get them. And mm -hmm. they're very specific, whether you believe in that or not. And I just feel it's a, you know, I, I think that was part of the grieving. Like mom said, you know, I'm going to throw you some signs. I'll make this easy on you. <laughs> exactly. Know. Exactly. I and know. I talk about the new paradigm of grief is you're not broken by this loss. You're broken open like a seed to grow in self-awareness and new connections. And you're experiencing those new connections with your mother. Yeah. There's cracks mm -hmm. in the shell, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the shell isn't broken. That's Actually, right. Actually, a friend of mine is a uh, songwriter and uh, 
he did a song. He made a song like that. And that's where it popped in my head. Uh, uh, you are so unique, Georgina. Uh, if somebody wants to reach out to you, uh, they're going through something, where do they find you? 503-309-3966. The voice conveys so much as we've experienced today. My website is Integrated Wellbeing Institute. And of course, in the upper right-hand corner, there is a contact. Let me say that again, because it's a mouthful. Integrated Wellbeing, all one word, institute.com. And uh, if, if you're a person grieving, there are a myriad of blogs and videos and tools there for you. And if you are a person who is a professional working with people grieving, mm. I am here to explore with you the training with these body mind processes. So you can teach your clients to be in their body instead of trying to think their way through grief. I would love next time we get together to, to talk about some of those principles and how we can all benefit from it as we go through a, a grieving process. All right, let's plan on that, Steve. Yeah, that sounds be wonderful. wonderful. It was great talking with you, Georgina, and uh, God bless you for being somebody that's there to help people in the way that you do. Your, your energy is amazing. You, you get it. You get us. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I heard that you tried to retire a couple of times and, and <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, oh, I failed twice. <laughs> and, 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 and for that, I thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.